regret, shame, disappointment, frustration. Have you ever felt this way before? The following were the remorseful words of Oppenheimer after the drop of the atomic bombs that hit Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The physicists have known sin, and this is a knowledge which they cannot lose. The story of the atomic bomb actually began with Hungarian physicist Leo Szilard. Szilard was a refugee who fled from the Nazis during World War II and worked at Columbia University. When he heard about the discovery of fission using the element uranium, Szilard realized that it could be the perfect element to produce an explosive nuclear chain reaction and discussed this probability with his friend Eugene Wigner, another refugee physicist from Budapest. The worry was, however, that the Germans might buy up the uranium supplies of the Congo, at the time colony of Belgium. Hence, Zillard and Wigner decided to get in contact with the one person they knew who was friends with the Queen Mother of Belgium, Albert Einstein. You may be surprised to hear that the idea of the atomic bomb by the three physicists was first discussed on a porch of a cottage. Zillard explained the process of how an explosive chain reaction could be produced in uranium layered with graphite by the neutrons released from nuclear fission. Then Einstein exclaimed, Oh, I never thought of that. Instead of writing to the Queen Mother, Wigner suggested that perhaps they should first consult the State Department. Since three refugees contacting a foreign government about important security matters might not turn out well. The letter was written by Einstein and eventually passed on by Szilard to Alexander Sachs, who was an influential economist and friend to President Roosevelt. Sachs insisted that he will hand deliver the letter right to the White House. When Sachs informed Einstein about the change of plan, it was the first time Einstein realized that something bigger was going to take place. They were no longer going to notify the Belgian government to be careful about selling uranium to the Germans the world's most famous scientist was about to tell the President of the United States that he should begin creating a weapon of an imaginable impact that would unleash the power of the atom. In the letter, Einstein warned, it may become possible to set up a nuclear chain reaction in a large mass of uranium by which vast amounts of power would be generated. This new phenomenon would also lead to the construction of bombs and it is conceivable that extremely powerful bombs of a new type may be constructed. A single bomb of this type, carried by boat and exploded in a port, might very well destroy the whole port together with some of the surrounding territory. After completing the draft of the letter, the three physicists decided that the best person to hand deliver the letter to the president was financier Bernard Baruch and MIT president Carl Compton. By then, events had turned what was an important letter into an urgent one. At the end of August 1939, the Nazis and Soviets stunned the world by signing their War Alliance Pact. This prompted Britain and France to declare war, officially starting the century's Second World War. Though at the time the US did not officially declare war, they did begin to develop weapons that might become necessary in the near future. After hearing the letter, on October 21st, Roosevelt gathered a committee to discuss the contents of the letter and the potential weapon. Einstein was not present in the meeting, nor did he want to be. He was neither a nuclear physicist nor someone who enjoyed proximity to political and military leaders. But his Hungarian immigrant trio, Zillard, Wigner and Teller, were there to launch the effort. Though the following week, Einstein received a polite and formal thank you note from Roosevelt. The atomic project was low. The Roosevelt administration approved only $6,000 for graphite and uranium experiments, an equivalent of $126,000 nowadays. But this all changed when Zillard heard of similar experiments done in Berlin. He contacted Einstein once more, and the two wrote another letter to Roosevelt, warning of the potential danger if the process is not sped up. Roosevelt called for a conference, and this time told the officials to ensure that Einstein would be there. But Einstein had no desire to be more involved. He conveniently responded that he had a cold and could therefore not be at the meeting, nor needed to be there. Physicists began to disappear, leading Einstein to understand that the bomb making had already started. But Einstein was never asked to join this bomb making project, known as the Manhattan Project, nor he was ever officially told about it. The Manhattan Project was the first ever undertaking to produce nuclear weapons. 
while the Los Alamos laboratory was where the bombs were designed. The director of the laboratory was nuclear physicist Julius Robert Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer surrounded himself with the best nuclear physicists in the world, arguably forming the most important research group that has ever existed in the history of science. On July 16, 1945, near Alamogordo, New Mexico, the first ever nuclear weapon was tested and successfully worked. Oppenheimer shared that when he witnessed the explosion, a Hindu scripture passed through his mind, I have become death, the destroyer of worlds. 20 days later, Hiroshima and Nagasaki experienced the wrath of the atomic weapon. Since then, the atomic bomb has changed the course of history. In the book Einstein, His Life, His Universe, which inspired this video, by the way, author Walter Isaacson writes why Einstein was so uninterested in the development. In Einstein's opinion, the system in which our world works, sovereign nations, military forces, competing ideologies, and conflicting national interests would inevitably produce more wars. For him, the realistic solution was a single world authority. Einstein spent the last 10 years of his life fighting for two things, a unified theory of everything in physics and a unified governing structure for the globe. A month after the bombs were dropped, a group of scientists signed a statement urging governments to create a council that would control atomic weaponry. Einstein supported the cause, but criticized the political recommendations that left the sovereign nations as ultimate powers. Einstein's search for a supranational entity which would exist above sovereign nations does not even come close to the United Nations, which was found in 1945 in order to partially solve the nuclear problem. Oppenheimer saw Einstein's idea as too idealistic. However, unlike many of his colleagues, he was always aware of his share of responsibility for the dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As he would say, it was a profound and necessary truth that the deep things in science are not found because they are useful, they are found because it was possible to find them. Einstein had an even more radical stance on the atomic bomb. In an interview with the magazine, Einstein stated, Had I known that the Germans would not succeed in developing an atomic bomb, I would have done nothing. Imagine just how different our world would be.